For our second example in section 11.2, we're going to look at a Wilcoxon rank sum test. This again is another non-parametric test to determine whether two independent samples were selected from populations having the same distribution. So when we're looking at this test, we are looking to investigate the automobile insurance claims paid in thousands of dollars by two different insurance companies. The table shows random independent sample of 12 claims paid by two insurance companies. At alpha is equal to 0 0.05, can you conclude that there is a difference in the claims paid by the companies? So I went ahead and did a little bit of setting up to make this go a little bit quicker. But step one again looks like our last example. Step one, our null hypothesis is there is no difference in the claims paid by the companies. That's like R equals mathematically. The alternative hypothesis states that there is a difference in the claims paid by the companies. So this again is where our claim is going to go. All right, for step two, we're going to use alpha is equal to 0.5 given in the problem. Now for step three, we're looking for our sample size. Now because we're going to eventually use a z-score for our test statistic in this example, we're going to use the normal distribution chart. So we're not using that Wilcoxon test. So what I'm looking for are, are our rejection regions in a normal distribution for 0 0.05. And for that, our critical values are going to be positive and negative 1.96. So that's a two-tailed test using 0.05 for our level of significance. So we're going to reject if our z ends up being less than 1.96 or if our Z is greater than 0.196. All right, now for the work. Now this work is a little bit tedious, so you have to keep everything in order to help make it make a little bit more sense. So you could actually go through here and do some of your rankings, but I find it easier to just take all of this data and order it from least to greatest. So I've already gone ahead and I've done that, I've taken the data and I've ordered it. Now what's important here is that you keep the ordered data with its sample so you know which value is which. So that 1.7 was our smallest value in our chart. That came from company B. Then 1.8, if I look at 1.8, it's right there. That came from company B. So I went through and I took all this data with its sample that it came from and I ordered it. So just like the last example, I need to find the ranking of this order. So you can see that this one doesn't have a lot that are the same, so it might be a little bit easier to order. So I have 24 pieces of data in the whole set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rank it. So 1.7 is going to rank 1, then 1.8 will be 2, 2.2 ranks 3, 2.5 ranks 4. Now for 5th and 6th place I have a tie so I'm going to average out that 5th and 6th place again and make that 5.5 and 5.5 so that's 5th and 6th. My 3.4 will be 7th place then 8th place then 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th I'm just going to continue down here, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th place. All right, now what I have to do is I have to add up all of my rankings. I'm going to add the rankings for each sample B. So I'm going to add, go find all of these rankings and I'm going to add them together. So when I do that, I already did this calculation. You take your time and go ahead and pause and add those together. But the rankings, the 1 plus the 2 plus the 3 
and so forth for all of my company B gives me a sum of 120.5. When I add all of my A rankings together, I get a sum of 179.5. Just like in the last example, my R is going to be the smaller of the two. So my R is going to become 120.5. So I'm going to hold on to that because I'm going to need that to calculate my z-score later. Right now what I need to do is I need to take the mean of my rankings or find my mean of my rankings, yes. So you can see here that they're going to distinguish between which is sample one and which is sample two. For this example, it's not going to matter because my sample size for both are 12. However, if your sample sizes were different, then n sub 1 is always going to be the smaller of the two sample sizes. When they're the same, it's not going to matter. All right, so I'm going to do my calculation for my mean of my rankings. So that's going to be n sub 1 times n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus 1 all divided by 2. When we make that calculation, that's going to give us a calculation of 150. Then I'm going to need my standard deviation of my ranks. So again, I have this calculation of n sub 1 times n sub 2 times the sum of those sample sizes plus 1 divided by 12. So I forgot to leave myself a little bit of space here. So that's going to be 12 times 12 times the sum divided by 12, not forgetting to square root that value. That's going to give me a value of 17.321 approximately. So I'm going to need those two values right now. So right now I have my R. I have my mean of my ranks and I have my standard deviation of my ranks. So I'm going to go ahead and use my test statistic for this example, which is a z-score. And my z-score is going to be the sum of my rankings, 120.5 minus the mean of my rankings, which is 150 divided by the standard deviation of 17.321. When I calculate that out, I should get approximately negative 1.703. With that and my rejection region, you can see that I do not fall in that rejection region. So for this example, my step six is going to be that I fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, I at the 5% level, I do not have enough information to say that there is a difference in the claims paid by the company, and I'll have a chance for a type 2 error.